Hey creative, what's up? It's your girl Jamila and welcome back to our laboratory. We're still on our journey on learning how to digitize and today I'm going to show you how I created this offset text in Chroma Lux. Of course, everything I use will be listed in the description box below. And if you like this video, you learned something new, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share with your friends and make sure that bell notification is on so you don't miss any of my upcoming craft tutorials. Okay, creator, before we even get too deep into our project, I just want you to know that I do have the Chroma Lux version of Chroma, okay? So if what I'm showing you isn't available for you, you may need to upgrade or you may have to do a few things differently, okay, if you don't have the Chroma Lux. All right, so first thing we're going to do is go ahead and hit the um, text tool and just click anywhere on your screen, okay? That's just going to bring up your text box. And for my word, I'm going to choose senior. And now with any of the Chroma software, uh, Chroma versions, you're gonna get some uh, preloaded digitized text, right? But with the Chroma Lux, you get way more than you get with Inspire. But I don't wanna use any of these. I wanna use some fonts that I've installed on my computer, okay? So I'm gonna hit this TT. I'm gonna check this box right here next to the TT. And so this font right here is the Madeline Hart. Now, one thing about these fonts, not all fonts are good for digitizing. Like not all of the fonts digitize well. As you can see, this one isn't digitizing well because like where, what happened to my O? <laughs> I have no idea why it does that, but sometimes you fall in love with a font and then you try and, um, you know, digitize it and it doesn't work well. And since I'm a beginner, okay, I'm just now dipping my toe into digitizing. I haven't played around to see like how to fix that or whatever. So I'm just going to move on to a different font. So all the fonts I have installed on my computer have populated right here. And these fonts I get from Creative Fabrica. Um, if you don't know about Creative Fabrica, it's like a monthly subscription to a website where you get fonts, graphics, all kinds of things. Um, yeah, and it's like a monthly fee, but listen, it's amazing, okay? And I'll have a link for you um, in the description box if you want to get 10 free downloads if you're new to Creative Fabrica. So this font right here is the Smithson font, and you see it digitizes as well. Some do, some don't. I don't. <laughs> it's just weird like that, okay? So we have our word, and I'm going to go over here to... The fill, yeah, I'm gonna go to the fill. So if I make this 3D, you see this is like a satin stitch and you see this little gap, right? Let me, let me zoom in a little bit. You see that little gap right there? Like that's not, we don't want that, right? So what I'm going to do is first off, I'm gonna change the density of this um, from 40 to about 35 I usually do about 35 or 30 and pay attention to right here so you see like it has like these spaces right here but when I change it to 35 it's closed okay so it's just making my stitches a little more tighter I don't want a satin stitch with satin stitches satin stitching is good for detailing um, a satin stitch can only be so wide okay so like that's why you see see it like this I, I don't want a satin stitch I'm going to do this to Tommy stitch, okay? And hit ply, and you see how different it's like nice and flat, and it just, I, I like the way it looks, okay? And I'm going to go back to text, and I'm going to, my spacing is at zero. Let's hit negative two and see, see what that does. Okay, so that makes it a little bit closer, but I still need to get rid of this gap. So maybe if I just shrink it down a little bit. Yeah, okay. So um, it was a little too wide, so it needed to be shrunk. And it seems to be fixing the problem. Or it did, what happened? Sometimes it takes a little while to auto populate. Maybe if I change, let me change that to like two. Okay, there we go. Let 
it's fixing it's getting better so now i'm not sure if the e doesn't have a hole i'm not sure if that bothers me enough to try and fix it though mm -hmm. i don't know we'll see let me see what happens if i just put it back to zero you just kind of have to play around with this a little bit okay um whatever font it is that you like just to get it to you know what it is that you want there we go so i changed my width to let's do eight nope stick it back down to seven And let's zoom out a little bit. Okay. Yes, that looks good. And I think I am going to put my spacing back to negative two. Okay. Okay, so this is what we have. And this is just our text, okay? So now what, now what we're going to do to get that offset is we're going to go up here to our top toolbar. And this little right here, this little circle thing right here, and it says create outline. And so the distance, we're just going to take it up. And I found that I like either point, I keep it between point 0.30 um, and point 0.40. And it's all a personal preference, okay? However big you want, whatever. And so I'm going to hit preview and you see it gives me a nice big, I, I like a nice big outline because I know I want to do glitter behind this. So I want the glitter to be pretty visible. Okay, so this is point 0.40. Um, if you wanted to do, let's see, point 0.50, hit preview again. I mean, even, I mean, I said 50, I mean, point 0.30 looks nice as well. And then you have the option to like kind of change like how it's all, I like bevel. Um, if we do round, oh, that didn't change much. Let me see. Yeah, I don't like miter because now it's like all jagged or whatever. Um, you know, there's just different options. So you could just play around with that, um, and see what it is that you like. So, um, let's keep it at point 30. I like that. So once your preview is good, you're just going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, you see, it's not, it's just an outline, okay? This is just like an outline. It didn't do anything. Now, if you wanted to, you can make this like a fill, right? And I could like move that to the back, put the text on that. So all that, all that blue would be stitched in, okay? And then you would have your text on top of it. Um, but we're going to keep it out as an outline and this isn't a stitch it's just an outline so what i need to do i'm going to hit right click and i'm going to hit convert to and i'm going to do applique now it's an applique stitch and you see how it has like that satin border around it i don't want this satin border i mean the satin border looks nice but i just don't want it right here i like the tackle twill so i'm just going to change that from drop down menu and hit apply and it gives me like that that look now right and so if I go to the draw button, see, so it's going to give you my outline first, and then it's going to go ahead and fill in the letters. Awesome. And if you're, because usually this, um, the blue part is, um, oh, let me undo, I don't want to move it. Usually if the blue part doesn't stitch out first, you just need to move it to the back. And to do that, you would just right click it hit order and you know uh right here where it says to the back send it to the back so that's the first thing that would stitch out okay so honestly y'all <laughs> that's it as far as the digitizing goes like um everything looks good my offset looks good so uh we'll just go ahead and save it i don't have my usb in, in my thing right now but yeah you would save it as a dst file to your usb name it hit save and then you go ahead and upload it to your machine okay i really just wanted to show you how to digitize this but of course i'm gonna go ahead and uh i stitched it out 
um first before you even do it like really big like this do small ones okay because i did a couple small test runs before i actually went ahead and made this big project okay always text test your work before you go ahead and stitch out especially as newbies okay <laughs> just because it looks good on screen doesn't mean it's going to look good when it stitches out so you have to do some testing so make sure you have scrap material um, available so you can test it out but anyway so mine turned out great um, when I did the practice runs so I'm going to go ahead and do my big stitch out and show you how that is in the end so of course once I placed the design onto my USB I inserted the USB into my Recoma EM1010 embroidery machine uploaded it picked out my thread colors and I'm just going to go ahead and trace out the design make sure that the needle isn't hitting the edge of my hoop now this isn't going to be a super de detailed tutorial on how to do applique but if you need one I do go into great detail step by step in this tutorial right here and of course I'll have it linked for you in the description box of this video as well but it's basically uh, when you're doing an applique, your first stitch is your placement stitch. And it just tells you where to place your fabric, or in my case, HTV. Um, you put your fabric or your HTV down, and then it's going to do your tack down stitch, which is what's going to hold your um, stuff in place, right? And then you'll go ahead and trim off the excess. And then once you have it all trimmed off, it's going to do your tack down stitches, and that's what's going to hold this into place. Now, a lot of times when people are working with HTV, TV at the end of the project they'll go ahead and press it but I don't do that like um, I guess it's just personal preference I kind of like the way it looks when it's unpressed because it's kind of like puffy I guess but uh, when you press it it gets flat so I don't know it's just a personal preference you could do whatever it is that you want to do right so since that was the only applique part of this project it's just going to go ahead and stitch out the rest of the letters and I'm so proud of myself on how this turned out like I was like oh my gosh this looks so good and one thing I love about applique is like no matter what material you use we can do the same design but switch up the material and it'll always give it a different look so I really love the versatility of applique right like I'm using ACV here but you can use fabric I could have used like some furry fabric or you know just like just so many options but I really hope that this tutorial was super helpful for you guys. Thank you for following along on my digitizing journey. I'm hoping that I'm helping you along on your digitizing journey as well. But this is how the design turned out. And I freaking love it. Oh my gosh. I'm super excited to add this. Um, be able to offer this to customers as well. Well, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Check out the description box. And until next time, I'll see you later.